the only argument that I can find against it is like fucking old asses being like, oh, like you're addicted to your phone. It's like, okay, like, <laughs> so what? It's like, bro, you're addicted to fucking drinking and cigarettes and racism. Like, that's fine. You know, like, <laughs> oh, I'm addicted to a cell phone. Like, well, fuck me, right? I was, oh, I, I should have asked if you got bevs on deck, ready to rock. I've got one. Okay. I have a, I have a, I have a little vodka and PC seltzer, so I'm set. You know, I'm good for okay. now. Okay. But. Beauty. Um, well, I'll ask you about that when we do the official bev check. But um, Perfect. Thank you so much, everyone, for tuning in. This is another episode of the Scoped Exposure Podcast. Uh, very excited for this one today. This is uh, the Counterparts Man coming back for round two. Uh, Brendan Murphy, thanks for you joining me. You guys can't get enough of me. Show. That's it. That's can't all it get is. Enough. You know what I mean? I'm, you know, I'm I'm all, I'm also probably like the least busy person in heavy music. So, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, oh, you want to do a podcast? I'm like, oh yeah, I was gonna go uh, take my fucking Gatorade bottles to the recycling bin, but I guess I can make some time. <laughs> <laughs> We're doing it now, or in ten minutes, or uh, next uh, week? Like, I, you know, I, yeah, all is open. Exactly. <laughs> Uh, but as for my Gatorade yeah. bottles, they're already in the bin. We're we're set. We're good. Don't worry okay, about yeah, that. Okay, yeah, we're set. Um, but, you know, like, I think we had, you know, just such a fun time the last time we talked, which was just over a year for ago sure. now, as far as, like, when um, when this, uh, when yeah. the yeah. first episode came <clears throat> up. And, uh, you know, I was looking, as season two uh, came up, I kind of made a note to, like, bring back some of the most popular guests of season one, and you were definitely within the top, within the top five. I was popular? Easily. Oh, I guess so. Hey, hey, Check. take that high school football team. Look at that. I'm fucking I'm I'm I I'm on this cool Canadian podcast twice, motherfucker. Exactly. Um um so No, that's like that's sick. I I love I mean like even with um like with Craig and stuff like for the downbeat and everything, like we we pretty much like just do a podcast whenever we're both bored. And it's like, yeah. hey, like you doing anything tomorrow? Like you want to just like have a fucking essentially like a FaceTime call and I'll just hit record and we'll post it. And I'm like, yeah, of course. Why not? Like what again? Yeah. Like what the fuck else am I going to be doing? Right. So the amount of times that I that I'm on the phone and maybe it's just my weird like marketing content brand and not being able just to like have a genuine conversation with someone but sometimes i have such good conversations mm. over the phone i'm like oh man i wish this was a podcast but then i'm like no this is cool that it's just for me and this person true world, true versus the yeah. entire world yeah you like you don't you definitely don't want all of them to be like that for sure but um <laughs> but with me like that's probably what you'll get you know like yeah when i do anything related to counterparts or end or like anything in general it's like all professionalism is like out the fucking window I'm not, you know, I'm not trying to like, ask me about the record. I'm like, no, like ask me like funny, stupid shit. Like that's, I, th I think that's what people that like any band that I have a hand in, like want to know anyway. So it's just like, absolutely, you know, it's like, yeah, it's like you called me and we're just like, what are you doing? You know? And that's, and then we just go from there. So I, and like, I'm, yeah. well, I'm happy to be in that spot. I would hate to uh, trick people into being like. Oh, I really want to talk about our new single. It's like, no, I don't. <laughs> like, why the fuck would I want to do that? That shit sucks. <laughs> yeah, but you know, I, I definitely got uh, a lot of just really fun questions that I think we'll hit on. That like, Sick. arguably, over half of them aren't even related to any of the music projects that you're a part of. So Perfect. that should be Perfect. fun. Um, but before we get into the episode, uh, we have to do a bev check. So, do you want to formally intro what you're going to be sipping? What's going to be hitting your lips? Uh, all that good shit. So I've got a um. Uh, I mean, the Canadians will know this shit. Americans will be like, what the fuck is this? Um, which is odd because the word president is in the name. Um, and we, and we don't have those here. We have prime ministers. So, uh, but yeah. <clears throat> I am having a vodka seltzer, but the seltzer is president's choice, um, cherry vanilla soda flavor. Ooh. Okay. <clears throat> it's That's a lot of, it's very long Bev name. It is. Yeah. And like, yeah, apologize for that, but it's, um, <laughs> in, in terms like so i used to be like you know me like I, I ride hard for aha and you know pretty much anything but like i don't really fuck with bubbly a lot like a lot but um but adrian 
one day like bought a case of it from Fortino's and I was like, yeah, whatever, I'll have one. And I'm like, this is just pop. Like, this is sick. Like, what the fuck? It's, it's water, but it's pop. Like, it's fucking water pop. So we have like, we have then they make like a bunch of flavors. We have like a ginger ale one, a root beer. We have so many in the mm-hmm. fridge. So it's just like, I'm not drinking water that's not carbonated. Maybe to take my Vivance in the morning, but you know what I mean? So, so we keep, we keep it pretty stocked and uh, yeah, you know, and I figure it's what, it's 4.09. Uh, that's probably early enough to start drinking. Who cares? Who gives a shit? Yeah. So. Yeah. It's Saturday, baby. You know, <clears throat> yeah, you can exactly. start, you know, yeah. whatever. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it was funny when I was thinking about what Bev to check for this episode. Cause I remember when, uh, when my band was, was playing in Hamilton, I was trying to hound you to drop off all the liquid death and you're like, Oh, I'm busy. And then you, and then I think you saw the photos of yeah. the aftermath. Yeah. You're like, Holy shit. Like I could have actually gotten a, like a, yeah. a sizable amount of, uh, cases for that. And so like, we, you know, you can see here, there's a lot. I feel like, I feel bad, but like we got a bunch of liquid death. Um, our, like a friend of ours who like, um, our managers hit me up and were just like, do you want liquid death stuff? And I'm like, yeah, for sure. hundred percent. And then we just got the regular one and I'm like, this is cool. But like, I need like a flavor, you know what I mean? Like I need like some, something to be there. I don't often drink right. like just straight up sparkling water unless I'm mixing it with things. And it's like, yeah. Like, or still water for that, for even yeah. going a level down. It, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I got but, you. um, it like, it was, so I had liquid death, like send a bunch of cases to my parents' house. And then the fucking day after they were like, Hey, we're doing, we're doing flavors. Now we got watermelon and mango and all this shit. And I'm just like, God damn it. I got a bunch of just fucking bubble water. Like in my house. I'm like, I want that one. I want the, give me the watermelon one. Like, are you nuts? So, um, I mean, I'm going to be gone for a while. So maybe when I'm back, I'll hound them to, to bless me with some flavor, but Oh man, I've I've been like I don't think that those flavors are up here in Canada yet, and I've been like I, I imagine they very be, but yeah I've been like on the hunt, and I am also mm. being wary of not like being the burden of like yo send this to me. So I think I think honestly I think this is the sign that I need just to place the Amazon order and just get some shit straight up yeah. so I can at yeah. least experience it. Um, but yeah, it's um. I, I will say, you know, mm. there's nothing wrong with having a bunch of just free product A and of course, B. Yeah, I've definitely, definitely been the most hydrated that I have been in most of my life because I've just like, yeah. I have an obscene amount that I need to get through one way or another. Um, but I'm actually not checking a liquid death at all. Mm. I'm, um, you know, this this is showing the uh, the growth of the show okay. since you okay. were last on here. So, so, it's, a, so know, it's a liquid life then. <laughs> yeah yeah we're, we're good then that's fine <laughs> very very close uh so since uh since you were on the show brendan we actually locked in some beverage sponsors actually so um you know it's it's even earlier than it is for me so you are definitely in the clear yeah. for drinking or starting to drink this time because i'm drinking a pinball <clears throat> wizard which is a raspberry sour um Sick. from the love of brewery so local brewery here in calgary that um blesses us with a bunch of free yeah. product and uh you know wanted to do one of those. It's definitely one of my favorite sours that they have. Um, and for, uh, yeah, that's for what some I'm reason. I thought you didn't drink. I don't know why. It is a very. I think my obsession with just bevs as a umbrella term <laughs> puts people off that it's either alcoholic beverages, yeah, or like just water. And it's for like, sure. It's actually yeah. both. Yeah. For for me. Yeah, I, I, I'm like, definitely I'm not the say, one you to, don't, to front that. I don't, you don't come off as like the you know like a boozy guy by any means so i'm just like okay i'm like okay like you know this is um so when uh i don't know like i for some reason i was just i'm like yeah he's gonna have some he's gonna have some cool ass like water pop or like a craft soda or something but um i mean respect to the to the sour i don't i can't drink anything like beer related in that world i just don't really like it but um i mean i have the i mean for me like i'm chasing the drunk so I'm just like, how do, yeah. I'm like, how do I do this as fast as humanly possible versus, you know, it's like, sure, I could have 10 white claws, but it's like, or I could just have like five shots and just be on a bad, right. like in, in a better zone. So, um, sure. Uh, you know, and that's my own little problem that I got to deal with, but we'll get there. We'll get there eventually. It's fine. 
But, we'll get yeah totally yeah but, but it is funny because you are definitely not the first person to be like you don't seem like someone that just is just balls to the wall with the booze yeah and I, i've not. never really been that person ever you know we we would be at, like if we you and i were at the show together we'd have a drink each but i would probably cap it there and then you would just i'd be like there's been he's going up <laughs> yep like oh check it out he's he's uh oh he's gonna go be problematic i guess like you know what i mean <laughs> But um, uh, well, dude. Cheers to you. Very excited to do cheers. round two. Happy to be here. Let's go. Hundred percent. So you know what's interesting now? I keep forgetting. I cheers, and I do have to actually pause and take a sip. Yeah, I just yeah. try to keep the 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 flow. Of Enjoy the yourself. You know. Times. Also, really quick. Okay, so I see a shitload of like white liquid death cans. What are those? Is that just the regular water? Yes. So okay. the black cans are the sparkling, yep. which okay. um, sounds like were sent to you. And then yep. the white cans are the still. So Okay, cool. Yeah, that's what's behind me. Yeah. The last time I drank like water from a can, we were on Warp Tour and like straight up gives me PTSD. So like, I don't know how you do it, but respect. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, yeah. Why Why would you get PTSD from, oh, just Warp Tour in general? Yeah, I hate it. Because I, I, I it, it's that. less about enjoying Warp Tour and surviving Warp yep. Tour, right? 100%. I mean, look at me. I'm fucking... I'm as I'm like as pale as printer paper. It's like I clearly don't fare well in the sun, uh, and you know, it was just like two months of heat and fucking loading strangers' gear for them. And I'm just like, hey, like maybe I'll go work at Best Buy. I'm done. Like I'm I'm fucking <laughs> over this. But uh, I, and I mean like we like it was fun, but it was because we had to make it fun. You know, like right. we did our little karaoke party every Friday. Um, we played a lot of board games with like stick to your guns and shit. So like that was fun. But if I got an offer, if we got an offer for it again, like, am I going to do it? Like you, uh, <laughs> I don't know, two months away from my cat to do work to her. Like you better, you better make me a fucking millionaire. So, <laughs> right. What? Wh okay. Since we're on the topic, yep. best and worst, uh, work tour experience. Um, let's start with best and end with worst. I and like, okay. So like at the end of the day, like, when it when it comes to worst it's it wasn't like it wasn't that bad it was just really long in the middle of the summer and it's like i'm a fucking indoor kid like i play magic like i don't go outside you know what i mean like i'm not i'm not like a hey let's go on a walk i'm like why the fuck would i ever do that like why did i buy a car then like why would i use right. my legs so um that like that was pretty rough but like um i think like overall again like it definitely wasn't the worst thing in the world like we had fun on the tour uh but and this is so fucking stupid and i know like I, i'm well aware that this is dumb as shit there was like four days straight where they promised me like a turkey blt with avocado for catering <laughs> and it just didn't ever happen and i was like why are you lying to me like what's what's wrong with you <laughs> like why would you tell me? And like, we would get the emails or whatever being like, oh, this is catering tonight. And I'm like, yes, I finally get, and like, it turned into a goof because the first couple of times it never happened. And then, you know, we get the email being like, oh yeah, you're finally getting your like turkey avocado BLT. And then I'd show up and it would yeah. be like, I don't know, here's, here's fucking pasta or something. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, oh, like you guys liars. Like what's happening right now? <laughs> like, just, yeah. Just give me my fucking sandwich. Um, so in retrospect, there's like, like some very evil maniacal warp tour person who's sending out that email yes, being like, yes. hey, they'll, they'll never get it. Exactly. Yeah. Being, being like, yo, like you guys want to fuck with Brendan today? Like, um, <laughs> so like, I mean, obviously like coming from, uh, you know, like in the grand scheme of things, like there's so much worse that could have happened on that tour. Sure. But that's sure. something that like, it's like, I know it's so stupid and it doesn't matter, but after it happening like five times, I was just like, if I don't get this fucking sandwich, <laughs> like, <laughs> like I'm going to fly home. Um, we also almost fought, um, security in Texas one time after one of our karaoke parties, but probably shouldn't, oh. probably shouldn't tell that story, but yeah, let's just tee that shout, up. Shout out, then... shout out to those guys. They were, they were sick. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> If, if they're watching or listening, you know, you know exactly yeah. what went down for that. If they're watching, um, I hope you had a good time cleaning all the garbage out of your fucking golf cart. <laughs> but God, yeah. 
<laughs> yeah. Um, well, th- yeah, good shit. I didn't know that Warp Tour would take um, this project, fl- uh, podcast flow hijack for a little bit, but that's that's yeah, good. It's, it, um, it's fine. That's fine. It's oh, and also goes. like um, to to like to finish it. The best was like doing our karaoke. Oh, shit. Yes. So like every Friday okay. we would do like I bought like a little projector. We brought a PA system, and every Friday we would like hook it up to the generator on our bandwagon, and we would like project. Like I would just do it off YouTube and I had like a T-Mobile like hotspot and I would just plug my computer in and we would just like host a karaoke party on Warped every Friday. And like at first they were like, like Warped was like really upset about it. I remember the first night that we really? did it, like production ran up and we're like, what the fuck are you doing? You can't do this. And then they see like, oh shit, like, wait a minute, Beartooth and Silverstein are having fun. Never mind, this is really cool. And then, <laughs> you know, so then it turned into a thing every Friday. And then uh, I remember there was beef. It was really funny. Like there's beef one day where this one dude did his own karaoke thing and everybody was messaging me being like, yo, they're doing like a karaoke thing, like at the work barbecue. Like, are you going to go? And like jokingly, I'm just like, no, fuck that guy. I'm like, fuck that loser. Like, <laughs> I'll never, I'll never do that. Like none of us are showing up. And then, uh, and it you, turned- you got to be loyal to your different karaoke. Right. Um, right? um entrepreneurs you know exactly um and it was like it was so stupid but it was like there's a lot of like funny stories like one that i all throw out was like um there was a night that um <clears throat> we we did it and um cky were like chilling like like not like with us but like they were around so shane from silverstein is just like he comes up and he's just like yo let me do like the fucking Bernadette Near song. And I'm just like, done, easy. So I put it on and then they run up and they're like, this is so fucking funny. And then, so I'm like, oh, Shane, like that was really fucking funny. Like do this next song with me. And I did smile, like we did smile in your sleep together. Right. And then, so I was like, I thought that was so funny. Um, And then we like Hawthorne Heights would do like acoustic sets some nights at like local venues and shit. And I remember being like, I'm going to get him. So I messaged, I text JT and I was just like, yo, the second your set's done, you have to Uber back to like, to our bandwagon, like shit's happening. Like you got to come back here. And he's like, okay, like, like we're done. We're just going to get paid and and we'll, and we'll Uber back. And he walks up and he sees me and he's just like, what's happening? Like what's going on? And I just give him the mic and then he thinks it's an emergency or something. Exactly. And then I just, (laughs) I give him the mic and then we ended up doing fucking Nikki FM together or something. And he just looked at me and he's like, Oh, you motherfucker. You like, but it was, (laughs) but like that, like a lot of that kind of shit happened. And it was like, that's why it was so fun. You know, Mm, we went from being like, you know, it's like, Oh, like what the fuck is counterparts to strangers? Like, I'm sure I met them and I just don't remember, but I'd be in the catering line and people would be like, dude, the party last night was so sick. And I'm just like, you're right. It was. And like, I have no <laughs> fucking clue what happened, but it was, it was fun. It was a good time. But what's your go-to karaoke song for you specifically? Uh, I like, I've got a handful. Like, I, I mean, I'm big on like Iris by Goo Goo Dolls. Um, mm. Depending on where I am, like I'll do some like Canadian hits like throw me like a billy s by sky sweetenham or fucking uh <laughs> okay. you know misery or bang bang boom by the moffats like one of the you know what i mean um and then every now and then you like kind of like certain places like especially private room type places if you're going through the the you know the giant book that they have with everything like right you can just get shit that's like you know the used or something or like my chemical romance or just like taking back sunday like that sort of stuff and i'm just like let's go like this is a win-win for me um yeah but and then then like by the end of the night um there was one time we did karaoke in italy and we were we were at this karaoke bar at like four in the morning and it was like the tour package and then like what i gathered it was like a 12 year old's birthday party which is weird because it was so fucking late and then a bunch of like people on dates and I was like, yo, I'm going to be like a menace. Like I'm going to do the Bart Simpson thing. And I, <laughs> and I go up to the DJ and, I, and I'm like, yo, let me do blue by Eiffel 65. Cause they're Italian. Right. And I'm just like, I'm like, okay, this is like, they're either going to fight me or they're going to love me. And so <laughs> I'm like, this is so sick. And the second it fucking starts, everybody from every table gets up and runs over to me and starts singing it with me. And it, oh, wow. it was like one of the <laughs> easily one of the funniest things I've ever like I've ever seen. I was like, 
I'm going up to the dude being like, guys, watch this. Like, I'm going to piss everybody off. And then they lo- right. they loved us. And I'm like, all yeah. right, karaoke, it's a common thing. It just brings people together. So, And probably one of the only times people are rushing the mic that isn't one of your band's related things. You're singing 100%. Blue of all songs. Like, like, <laughs> especially given like, given like the age range where it was like, Sure. Yeah, like some fucking 12 year olds running up to me being like, listen up, here's the story. And then like, <laughs> and then his parents are like dancing with me. And I'm just like, what the fuck is going on? I'm like, where am I right now? But uh, that night was, yeah, that was it. Like I said, I mean, karaoke just does it. It, just, it brings people together. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a fun time. I watched yeah. fucking, I watched like, like, I think it was like Wayne from Hate Breed and this girl, Steph, who was like selling merch for Pure Noise, like they did like a Paramore duet together. And I was like, this is, and like, I was going to do it with her. And Wayne comes up and takes the mic and he's like, I'm doing this one. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> like have fun. And I'm just like, what the fuck is going on right now? But it's, dude, it's, I think, it's I think time. there's a need for like a alternative music, um, karaoke YouTube channel. Like to me, that seems like a million dollar idea of like being able to bring on like I don't give a fuck about like all the cast members of Spider Man lip syncing to this thing. No, I just want to no. hear exactly, Jamie yeah. Josta <clears throat> and this this yeah. person from Pure yeah. Noise or you know whatever to to do that. Like yeah. that sounds like such Al- a, a killer almost thing. like a like I don't know if you're familiar with his with his art, but like Buff Carell, like Carell Buffer, like the dude. You know what I mean? Like like something mm. like that, but it's you know, but we don't have like electrical tape eyebrows and we're not <laughs> doing like this shit and everything. And like, right. I think like, I think it would be really funny, but yeah, absolutely. But, but there, um, was, like, so... there was a cute aspect of doing it in a parking lot off of a fucking generator that was like rogue and like DIY or whatever. So like, sure. That, yeah. like, that was like the, that was the charm of our karaoke thing. Whereas like one yeah. time Warped Tour was like, just do it at the barbecue. And I'm like, no, that's too like, that's like too official. Like I like doing it where, Oh fuck. My hotspot went out. Like everybody chill for 15 minutes till I get service back. I'm like, that's the charm. <laughs> that's the charm of it, you know, but right. Whatever. So, um, I love that we're over 20 minutes into this podcast already and we haven't even hit on anything on my <laughs> list. That means the flow is exactly, nice yeah. and it's, it's, fuck you it. know, it's taking into new waves. One of the, you know, cause this is your second time on the podcast, yeah. so we don't have to hit on a lot of the origin stuff because sure. that already lives sure. in the first interview. One of the things I want to talk to you about is kind of the last minute MacGyver misery signals furnace fest set that you got to do some vocals on. Can yeah. you tell me about like, you know, for those that maybe weren't privy to a lot of the stuff that was happening, you know, for that festival and mm-hmm. how that all came together? Yep. Yeah. So, um, so I mean, like counterparts, like we had to drop furnace fest. Um, so it was just me there. Um, and like, uh, and I mean, because end still played, so we like, end played like really early on one of the first stages. So it, 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 like, for me, it just kind of turned into this, like, you know, have this and like, I, you know, like I said, I tried to be as safe as I possibly could. Like I wore my mask the entire time, but it's like at the time that we did that, like September, 2021, I guess it was like Alabama was the fucking covid hotspot in the states so sure so i could have picked probably like a cooler spot to go on like a vacation but (laughs) but either way it was like we're there it's fine um we also like counterparts are supposed to play day three i believe so we already had the tit like the flights and stuff so like me and the rest of end like we decided we just decided like yeah let's just fucking stay for the whole thing so so we do that and um I'm hanging out with comeback kid because like they're, you know, like they've been friends of ours for, for years. And I think like, I want to say it was like Andrew's idea. I can't really remember, but so misery signals, unfortunately had to drop. And, um, and I remember like, we were just like kicking it and Andrew came up and was just like, yo, like, let's do a misery signal song. Like, it'll be, it'll be sick. And I'm just like, okay. Like, if it's on of malice, like you just pick a fucking winner and I, and I I can do it. Um, so we were like, we ended up like talking about it and like, we were like kind of throwing the idea around. I want to say this was day two, I think. Um, and, and so, you know, like everybody's there. It's like, like Greg, the guitarist from end, like he played in misery signals for a while. Um, I'm pretty sure like the, 
like the original dude, like the guy, like, so it's Stu and I can't, I can't even fucking remember his name. It was just like, so last minute, but the original misery signals guitarist was there as well. Like the guy from the fucking demo who like right. did the first shit on, uh, on your summer ended in June, he was there. And then you, ha- then we had, um, like we had like Mo, like he was like playing drums for Shai Halud and, um, and so we just like got together this like fucking, this like random group of like fucking surfs, I guess. And it was just like, yeah, like let's like, let's do a misery signal song. And so in my mind, I'm going like, okay, we'll probably like, maybe we'll do like five years or something or like, you know, uh, maybe they'll fucking come back here, like open their set with like victim a target or something. You know what I mean? Like, it's like just this quick in and out thing. And then everybody starts talking about your summer ended in June. And I was like, I mean, that to me, like, that's my favorite metalcore song of all time. Like that's Mm. to me, like that's the be all end all for metalcore. And I'm just like, that's, you know, like that's, that's like a crazy thing to be able to do also like the lyrical content, you know, and everything. And like it being about, um, you know, like people's friends passing away and stuff. I'm just like, I don't know if I feel comfortable with this. And I remember I messaged Jesse, <clears throat> like like the singer of Misery Signals, and I was just like, yo, this idea is going around. Like, am I allowed to do this? And he's just like, 100%. Like, if you don't, I'll hmm. be fucking mad at you. Like, play play the fucking <laughs> song. So, right. so I'm like, okay. I, like, I guess we're doing this thing. And, um, and so we like we decided we were going to like end the comeback head set with it. And I'm pretty sure that was on day three. And it's like, it was so funny. It was like everybody, like everybody that played it, we were like in comeback kids van, like listening to it on the fucking, like through the aux cord and everyone has their guitars and they're doing it. And we're just like, you know, we're like, Mo, like, yeah, like you can play the drums. Right. And he's like, yeah, I'll be fine. And like, I mean, he's fucking fantastic. Like the guy absolutely nailed it. Um, yeah. But then like seeing everybody else do that, like seeing like Stu Ross being like, I need a refresher. I was like, okay. I'm like, okay, maybe I do too. Like, right. You know, I'm like, it's my, if, if the guy who is actually in this band needs yeah, a refresher, yeah, like, maybe the, <laughs> me, I do. Exactly. Well. Yeah. Like the guy who like <laughs> recorded the fucking album. Um, so then I'm sitting there like looking, I'm on like fucking dark lyrics.com or whatever, like looking at the lyrics <laughs> and I'm like, yep, they haven't changed. Like it's still the same ones that I remember. Um, and Andrew was like, he was like, yeah, like, do you want to work out? Like, you know, I do one part, you do another. And I'm just like, no, like, let's just fucking both do it all. Like, it's sick. And then, yeah. And then we did it. And yeah, like, I mean, easy, easily one of like the coolest things that's ever happened to me for sure. Like being able to, cause I mean, like we've like, we did the of malice 10 year tour and I wouldn't you know, Jesse came up to me one time and he was like, yeah, like you want to do like a guest spot or something or like sing a song. And I would have never thought to do that one. Cause I'm just like, well, you know, like that's about your friends that unfortunately passed away. So it's like, I didn't know them ever. So like, I don't feel, I don't feel right doing it. You know what I mean? But right. Getting the okay from him was really sick. And then even afterwards, like when the videos went up and everyone was freaking out, he messaged me and was just like, yeah, like, you know, you did fucking great. Like the shit was awesome. And and I know that like, you know, Andrew knew them and uh, like obviously Stu knew them and stuff. So it was like, you know, to kind of have that okay from everybody to be like, yeah, like you, you did it justice. Like it was fucking awesome. And I'm like, well, yeah, like I really tried because it's my favorite metalcore song of all time. You know what I mean? So yeah, I can't half ass like my favorite metalcore song of all time. Right. Especially when like, I have that opportunity. Like it, Like it was so funny. I'm like, I like I was on stage like during the comeback kids set, just like reading the lyrics. And I'm like, I know these words. Like this record, <laughs> I'm like, this record came out in 2004. Like I've been listening to it weekly since then. Like I, I'm mm. fully aware of what he's fucking saying, but I'm just like, if I blow it, I'm going to have to lay down and let everybody kick the shit out of me. So I need to just like do this really well. Um, and also like, you know, they do the fucking weird mathy type shit. You know, they're not, it's not just like a standard thing. So I'm like, yeah. I mean, even with counterparts, I'm like, yo, like, I can't, I'm not good at this stuff. Like I'm a fucking, I'm a dumbass. So 
right. about like four four like what about four four you know like why, why are we coming in at weird times like let's just make it easy um <laughs> don't hit me with this seven eight bullshit give me a did, four four <laughs> right and it's like and like you know i've been around it long enough to where i understand what that would mean but that doesn't sure. mean that i'm gonna nail it i'm just like you know like it takes <laughs> fucking time so right uh so yeah so you know we we all jammed it in the van made sure we had it they come back had ended their set and then we did the little surprise thing and it was like it was sick and i i think like a lot of people that were really upset about misery signals not being able to come to the festival like they were really stoked about it because it was like okay you know like we don't have misery signals doing it but we have like i mean two and a half of them doing it i guess and then like a bunch of other right. people that and it's no secret that you know counterparts loves that fucking record it's like yo like right you know who like who's gonna be fucking shocked at that um so so yeah so like we did it and it was it was it was great i had i had such a fun time doing it like my only thing is like the only way that could have been better is if like i didn't have to sing and could just watch it and like jesse was doing it. you know what i mean but <laughs> sure yeah 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 but, yeah but i i think it you know to your point i think it's like <clears throat> the best th the best thing that could happen with the current scenario with sure, people sure. not being able to do that and, like, and you know i think it's it's very cool to see because you see it like when you're in a small band and you're on a small local level um where people will you know, fill in on drums or do things to sure, kind of sure. make the show happen or make the tour happen. But to see so many, you know, people in bands that are arguably like, you know, they like very, very well could have just been like, you know what, that, that sucks, you know, yeah. you know, but took the initiative to be able to like jump in and still make something sick out for sure, of a, for sure. a, sh a shitty situation. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, like, you know, like coming from, I, like, like I said, like that, like, there's no secret that that's like, that's one of the records that made counterparts like what we are. So to be a part of it felt really cool. And, you know, I think, I think that like, like, obviously like it, it was, it was cool for me. Like I was like, yo, this kicks fucking ass. Like I, I sang my, my favorite metalcore song for, you know, like at a show and like, it was fucking awesome. But the other really cool thing was like, even leaving, like I, like walking out, like, cause you know, I was like walking around all day and having people come up to me and just be like, dude, like that was fucking awesome. Like, you know, that song means a lot to me and it was cool that you guys did it and everything. I'm just like, this is, you know, like it was really nice. It, it felt cool to be a part of that. And it's like, obviously in like in the grand scheme of things, when you zoom out, like we covered a song. So it's like, it doesn't really <laughs> fucking, it's like, okay. Right whatever you went on fucking ultimate guitar and like learn the tabs, um, right. you know, or like, but the context <laughs> matters right. for that. Exactly. Yeah. Because I think that like, also I'm, I'm fairly certain that like one of the last dates that, <clears throat> that like, uh, seven angels and compromise would have played, like would have been at F furnace or some shit like that. So it's just like, mm. it's, you know, it, it like, it was a thing. And I was like, I guess I didn't really, understand like the weight of it until after like till afterwards where it was like to me i'm like yeah i'll cover a fucking misery signal song like 100 <clears throat> percent. but mm. afterwards like having like fucking like jesse hit me up about it and you know other people and just walking around and people just being like dude like that was fucking amazing i'm like you know it it felt it felt like i was actually like a part of something like really cool right. that happened at the festival so i'm like this this is sick. This is nice. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I love those kind of like surprises that happen, whether it's because of a situation like that, or, you know, people are intentionally kind of planning sure. something sure. and, you know, like I, I genuinely, genuinely believe that if it was like more in like a traditional metal setting or even something that's like a little bit more just like radio influence, like people would just be like, that shit happens and they would just move sure. on. But sure. I think, hardcore kids and punk kids have this like weird mindset of like, well, let's still try and figure out a way to, to, to salvage something 100%. and squeeze any juice that's left in yeah. the lemon. You yeah, know? exactly. And also, I mean, like, mm -hmm. like furnace fest, like the festival itself has been like going on for so fucking long. So it's like, you right. know, like the, the name, obviously like the one that they did, like it was probably like the biggest one, like the lineup was 
easily one of the best lineups I've ever seen with my own fucking eyes anywhere on earth. So like, <laughs> right. you know, the, like having it be this like special furnace fest thing, that was also really cool. You know what I mean? Because if, like, if we just, you know, if we were playing a show in some, like a, you know, in like a club somewhere and it was like, ah, oh, Mystic is going to play and they dropped whatever. And we covered it. Like that's one thing, but doing it at furnace fest, like I felt, you know, because all of the bands that influenced counterparts and me specifically and all that shit, it was like Furnace Fest was a big deal to them. So like inherently, like it was a big deal to me and being able to do something that stood out for the weekend, because I mean, you know, you have so many, like there were so many like giant bands playing and like there was so much cool shit that was going on, but like to, you know, to be a part of something that stood out for that weekend was really cool. Absolutely. And yeah, it's it's crazy because they definitely had a successful year. And then the, the lineup that they've announced for this year is like even more bananas, if anything. So it's um it's it's really cool to yeah. see and, and definitely a special um thing that uh that clearly you got to experience. Yeah. Another, you know, total topic change, but another thing that's you know different from the first time sure. that we had you on the podcast is that um, you've jumped into the TikTok, TikTok universe. Slightly. Yeah. I mean, I like, Slightly. I, <laughs> I, no. I try to, but like, um, you know, I'm also like a 30 year old man who screams for a living. So it's like, I don't really have, <laughs> I don't have like a lot of weight to throw around on TikTok, but I will say like, I go on TikTok like a lot, like I'm on it. Yeah. I'm on it all the fucking time. If there's ever like a, like I don't know why I'm saying if there's ever like there's so many fucking like there's so much downtime in in my day personally uh, to where, you know, it's like, OK, cool. Like, what am I going to do? Like sit and stare at the fucking wall. Like I open up TikTok and like it's easily one of the best things that's ever happened to the Internet for sure. Like it's <laughs> it's so good. And like every now and then when I think of something funny, I like try to get involved and shit. But at the same time, I'm just like, this is like this is like something for me to consume. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, but yeah. And, and and every every once in a while, if you want to, you know, stitch something together. Um, if there's something I feel sense. like I contribute, like I can, sorry, I can contribute to where it's like, no one's done this. This is funny. Um, but even then, dude, it's like like I watch videos and I'm just like, I'm like, oh, man, like I have like a funny comment and I'll open up the comments and like the top rated comment. It's like they fucking beat me to it. I'm like, these people <laughs> on TikTok are so fucking smart. And, right. you know. And I also love that, like you have that aspect of it, and then you have people that don't understand it, sort of like shit talking it, being like it's it's a bunch of people just like doing dances, and I'm like no, like I've learned like valuable shit from that fucking app, you know what I mean? And it's like it's an right. app, and then you have the other yeah. side of people being like it's fucking the Chinese government spying on us, and I'm just like let them spy, like I don't care. I, I'm like dude, I got to watch our a government's already spying on us, so For, might as right? well just open the gates to everyone else. I'm like dude, if like. If it's like, oh, the government gets to spy on your shit a little bit, um, but check this out. Do you want to watch a video of like four otters waking up a monkey sleeping under a blanket like outside somewhere? I'm like, yes. In what world do, do I not want to watch that? Like, are you fucking insane? Like, I trade privacy for otter videos right? of waking up monkeys. Dude, and I'm any day of the week. I'm like, oh, privacy. I'm like, oh, oh, you know me of all people it's like okay the government's gonna be like well he fucking he plays magic and he drinks a gatorade before bed and he drinks one when he wakes up so it's like okay <laughs> let him know like it's nothing it's no new information that i haven't told people before so that's right. fine but so i i think tiktok is interesting because uh i've heard from people that they can get stuck in different algorithm feeds as For far sure. as like oh yeah. what tiktok algorithm are you this week i'm just curious <clears throat> on what your algorithm is like right now my algorithm is like, it's so fucking like, it's a war zone for sure. Um, so like, not like, and not in a bad way, but like, I, I, I don't know if I find it endearing or weird or like, I or funny or like what it is, but like, there's a, there's a giant part of me that like, I like weird shit. Like I like, mm -hmm. you know, like the, so if I go on my for you page and stuff, like, Obviously, you know, the the fucking massive videos that everyone's talking about, like 
I'll open it up and it'll be like, oh, fucking quirked up white boy, busted down sexual style, like that type of shit. But, <laughs> but also like I get a lot of videos that are just like, it's like, I think like I'm one of like the fifth people that have ever seen this video ever. And it's like, there's no likes and it's just the weirdest shit that you can think of. And I love that because I'm like, like what I remember when I first got the app and the algorithm was like, just, just starting to like, you know, understand who I am and like what type of shit I watch. Like right. when I first got it, my, my whole for you page was like, like it was people talking about, um, like people with their cars and being like, yeah, you know, like fucking 5% window tints illegal, but I have six like, and I'm just like, okay, I don't care about any of this shit. Or it'd be like, like Trump stuff or something. And I'm just like, none of this matters to me. Like I'm not this guy, but then after using it for a while, it learns. And then it's just like, you know, it's like, Hey, do you want to see a video of like someone dancing in their living room? And, uh, only four other people have seen it. And I'm like, yes, a hundred percent. Yes. Show me that shit. Like, that's exactly the type yeah. of stuff that I want. Um, but but yeah, I, I mean, I, and, and also at the same time, like there's so much shit that I've like, um, I was like, I was going to like tweet about it, but then I'm like, I don't think anybody will care, but I, so I saw a video the other day. Um, there's a lot of like ADHD, like neurodivergent type, like, you know, people talking about their experiences and like what they do to cope and stuff. So I watched a video of a girl who she got diagnosed with ADHD, like way too late in life, which is like same, same with me. And it's so simple, but she said something about like, like she showed her hand and she's like, I take like eight, eight pills a day for my medication. And she's like, so some of them float and some of them sink. And I was like, what the fuck are you talking about? And she was talking about like, like I think she's on like Vyvanse, which is the same medication that I take and it floats. So like, if I wake up and I'm at a weird angle and I take my Vyvanse, like sometimes it'll get stuck in my throat. And then, so instead of like, oh, because it floats. Exactly. So, so instead, instead of still like, instead of tilting my head back, I started going like this and it hasn't happened. And I'm just like, yo, you fucking taught me something. Like you taught me something. <laughs> this is the app is very valuable. No matter what you mm. like, depending on what you want to get out of it, like there's something and you'll, and you'll figure yeah. it out. And it's just like, that to me is so crazy that it's like, so what, you know, you want a little bit of my privacy, like fine whatever fuck it you know it's like oh I, i'm looking up yeah. uh like cat beds and suddenly i get videos about people oh i bought this new bed for my cat and he loves it it's like okay it could be worse you know what i mean like i don't know mm -hmm. but yeah it, it i think a lot of people are just quick to judge anything that they don't aren't willing to actually like get into the mix of course and for sure i think it's no different mm -hmm. than vine was yeah. or even yeah. instagram back in the day and I think like, you know, people that I look up to that, you know, uh, look at some of the, the shifts in our, our culture, like e every platform has just aged up. So like mm, Facebook started sure. as like mm. a college demographic and now it's just a bunch of old boomers. It's and, only and, uh, old people. Our yeah. grandparents, you know, exactly. <laughs> so yeah. they're either inviting you, know, so you maybe... to your fucking cousin's birthday dinner or they're posting <laughs> being like. I'm going to go out and honk my horn with the trucks at the fucking convoy. And you're like, dude, come on. I'm like, Jesus Christ. But <laughs> like, come on, grandpa, you're better than that. Yeah. Um, I, it's funny that you read that up. Cause I saw, um, uh, I think Noah Miller, is that the, uh, late, no, late, uh, show host and comedian. He was talking about like the people who are stuck in traffic. They're like honking the horns, like, "Hey, I'm late for work." It's like, "Yeah, freedom." It's and like I'm yeah, not honking right? like with you. I'm trying to honk. Yeah. To, you know, it's, yeah. it's a very countering system. But um, yeah. they're you know, like, before they're, we they're go like, back, they're contributing to the fucking to like to the dipshits. <laughs> exactly. You know what I mean? It's just like, oh, like, like, there's no way yeah. to win, right? But yeah, um, but but going back to TikTok, I think a lot of people just are, you know, it maybe started as a thing that was for younger. You yeah. know, uh, you know, Gen Z people to, uh, you know, scale up and um, sorry, it started there. But now it's like, you know, you could see your aunt who's uh, a sous chef posting things on there. Exactly. And I, I think it, I think you're totally right. I think there's like 
there's almost like this weird thing where like there's all these like different hacks and just different things like oh i'll try this and then people are like no way that works and then they you know go through it again it's like it's um, it's cr- like and i feel so fucking it's very wild so west stupid. Right now, it's like sure. like i mean for me so it's like with my vivance like my add meds it's like dude i've been i've been taking it for like like just over a year now and like like in what world? Like you think my doctor gave them to me, and he's just like, "By the way, these float; they don't sink in your mouth." <laughs> it's like I would never. Yeah, they're not putting that on. Yeah, the I would never know that. But like you learn these, you learn these things, and like you know, there's a bunch of other shit too, where it's like people talking about like, oh, like I don't know, like fucking whatever, like oh, you got to get out of this ticket, like do this, like oh, you want, you need money for to pay for student loans, do this, and all these things, and I'm just like, right. dude, this, this shit's free. Like this app is fucking free and like all you got to do is just use it and then eventually it'll mm-hmm. you know and then at the same time you just end up with i don't know fucking weird ass videos that i get to put in my story where people will message me constantly and just be like what the fuck is wrong with you like how do you find how do you find these people i'm like dude i follow like 10 of my friends on TikTok. it's all the for you page like the algorithm like the algorithm has me down they've figured me out like they right. they cracked the fucking code. They hacked into my shit, and they just got me. And I love it. I love it. It's like yeah, I think there's a bit of a flex when you can pull the memes and the like the funny videos that literally have like you said like ten likes versus like hey, I just found out about White Claw Gabe. It's like okay, welcome to the party for sure. You know? Ex- exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Hundred percent. And and yeah. like and don't get me wrong, like that shit too. Like I love seeing that stuff, and I love being in the know. Like even like I said before, like. The first time I heard that like quirked up white boy shit, like busting it down sexual style, like I, I thought that was so funny. And I'm just like, fuck, I'm like late to the party. So it makes me want right. to be even more on top of it. And the only argument that I can find against it is like fucking old asses being like, oh, like you're addicted to your phone. It's like, okay, like, <laughs> so what? It's like, bro, you're addicted to fucking drinking and cigarettes and racism like that's fine you know like <laughs> oh i'm addicted to a cell phone like oh fuck me right but but it's oh, uh dude it's a uh, it's it's great i think the, i think the last time i like you know like i f- like found a new like social media website or like app or like whatever you want to call it it was probably twitter and mm-hmm. you know what I mean? So it's like, and like, I'm like, Twitter's my shit. Like I'm the fucking Twitter guy. So it's like, I, yeah. once I, and uh, we actually like some of my friends and I got in this argument the other day where it's like, there's almost like this weird, um, like people, you know, like people that like pretend to be really busy where it's like, you know, they're not that busy, but they're just like, oh, I have so much shit to do. And you're like, no, you don't. <laughs> like they, sure. they, okay. they love to do that shit where it's like, I could, I could never have TikTok on my phone. I would be on it all. I'd be on it. Way oh, I, I, much. I get you. Now. And it's like, dude, I'm on it way too much. It's enriched my life. Like fucking figure it out. Like who cares? Right. You know, it's like, I know you're not that busy, but yeah, <laughs> I know yeah. that you could scroll the for you page, you know, a, a little bit. And, and I don't right. think there's anything wrong with that. Honestly, like, no, I nothing think, at all. I think even just the, I, I think being aware of like, Oh, I got shit to do, and I've I've scrolled for like an hour straight, and I need yeah. to kind of check that. Versus like just letting your mind actually just like unwind a little bit and just of course, kind of go yeah. to mush a little bit is like yeah. kind of just re- releases some uh some stress and yeah. and pressure yeah. at least for me. Definitely. Yeah, and like I so like I don't know if I don't know if you've ever been on it as long as I have, but like like I don't know if you like this, so they have warnings on there. Like if you, oh, okay. Yeah, like if you're, I didn't like, know that. No. So there'll be some nights where it's like, I'll, I'll, I think I'll get in. Sorry to do your thing. I was just gonna say, I think I catch myself sometimes just going through the, um, the the videos and reels through Instagram yeah. and yeah. realizing fifty per, over fifty percent of them are TikToks, and then I'll just jump over to the other app. Yes, but yeah, for sure. as you were saying. Yeah, but uh, but there's like, so I mean, most nights it's like okay, like I'll get into bed around like midnight one whatever and i'll just like scroll and if i can't sleep like i just keep i keep it going because it's like yeah like i'm trying to get tired and then if you scroll like through tiktok for a certain amount of time you'll get these messages like from tiktok where it's like it's a tiktok video and it's somebody popping up in the video being like hey you've been scrolling for way too long like you should have a glass of water and like you know maybe go to bed (laughs) or like you know go outside do something like that and it's just like 
you know, I mean, for me, I see it. It's I, like a TikTok referee being like, exactly, you, right? Come over here. <laughs> yeah. And like, and I like, I'll see that shit and just be like, well, I'm my own boss, so you can get fucking bent. And I, and I, like, <laughs> I, I just keep scrolling. But, you know, for normal people, it's like, I'm sure that, you know, normal people with who are smarter and like who have, who are busier than I am probably see that and go like, Oh damn, you're right. It's, it's three in the morning. Yeah. I should, I should have a glass of water and go to bed. But it's like the amount of times I've seen those morning videos is like fucking insane. But so, I mean, I, I have ADD. So it's like, you know, like what am I supposed right. to do? Right. Like, yeah. Uh, Jordan, go who's read on the call like, here. Yeah. Oh, Jordan, yeah. who's on the call, just sent me a text saying, when I see those messages, that's my cue to go to bed. <laughs> It's like that. Okay, now it's time. Yeah, he's he's strong. He's stronger than I am. I see those yeah. and I go, yeah. I'm like, yeah, good one. And then I just go for another couple hours. But, but yeah, right. I like. I think it's a. I mean, like you even like. I guess not not necessarily so much in the heavier music world, but like in pop and like rap and stuff like that. Like, there's a thing to be said about like, you know, like. I mean, look at that fucking, like the Drake song, the fucking right foot up, left foot slide shit. It's like, that's like made for TikTok because he knows that like you make a song and you know that people are going to like make a video of them doing it. And then you have a mm. viral thing and then, oh, oh, I, the song's platinum. It's like, they're like, you can use it to your advantage if you want to. Oh, but totally. You yeah. Know, but I, I don't, I just, I, you know, for my videos, it's like, I just want to make people laugh. Or, and even more important than that, I want to laugh myself. So I'm just like, just right. give me the funnies, you know, let me, let me, let me scroll through some shit. But I, I definitely think your, my favorite TikTok of yours when it's that, uh, it was that trend where it's like, describe what you do for work really badly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and it all ends with like, if me screaming at people, not fighting each other doesn't, uh, go the way I want, then I tell them, um, to go fuck themselves yeah. In order to yeah. sell t-shirts. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's like, I, oh, I, I, I get a room full of people together and I bully them into giving me their money. A room full of strangers. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, <laughs> and it's just like, you know, like, and dude, like all the trends and like all the, like that pop off on TikTok and shit. I'm just like, this shit rocks. Like, this is so funny. Um, yeah. So I don't know. I'm, I know I'm, I'm a little bit out of the age range for like a lot of the users of the app, but like, I fucking, sure. I love it. Like, I, th I think, yeah. I think it's sick, but, um, to, to pivot to an entirely different social media platform, um, you know, like you said, like, and anyone who knows you, you know, Twitter is like your bread and butter, yeah. I would say, yeah. and I don't think that will ever change. Um, Probably not. I was, I was, <laughs> I was perusing through there earlier today and I was just kind of going through and I saw one that was like interesting to me that prompted maybe more of a, like a bigger question. Sure. Uh, where you were like, I don't, I don't have anything funny to say about the convoy because you know my cat is, uh, you know, not doing super well today. Yeah. So I was yep. like, does Brendan feel pressured to like be funny on Twitter and to tweet every day? Like, do you feel that like external like force? Like, yeah, like yes and no. It, it's really weird. Like, I don't, I don't feel pressured to like push tweets and like talk about stuff, but also at the same time, it's like I feel like. I feel like maybe like not like I don't think that there's a lot I don't think that there's like a lot of people being like oh like like I can't wait to hear what Brendan has to say about the convoy <laughs> because at the same time they're probably just like no I just like the I'm gonna kill myself song and like that's all that matters to them which is fine but for me like you know when I'm on tour or like when I'm really busy and stuff like obviously you know the last thing in my mind is like oh I should tweet something funny but but yeah, like there is like a little bit of a pressure, but it like, and it only comes from myself to where I'm just like, this is funny. And like, I could fucking nail this. Like I could, you know, I could do something like it'll do numbers. Like I could, you know, like it's like, it's, it's like, it's definitely coming from like a selfish standpoint where it's almost like I need to push my own brand and somebody's giving me like an alley-oop where it's like, Hey, you got a sure. bunch of fucking truckers who are wearing diapers in Ottawa because no one will let them use the bathroom if they don't wear a mask. And I'm just like, this is, I can hundred percent make something out of this. Like I can, <laughs> you're I, like, I can work with this. Yes. I'm, I'm like, I've worked with, I've, I work with less on a daily basis. Like you're just, you're, <laughs> you're spoon feeding me like jokes. Uh, but, but you know, at the same time, it's like, 
the like last week it was like my cat was really sick so i'm like okay like you know i like i it, it, like it's almost like a warning being like yo like don't worry like i'll get him like i'll get him in time but like i have to i have to figure out like how i'm gonna give my cat four pills a day you know what i mean like like yes. that sort of shit but mm -hmm. um but you know for me like i think that i like i would say almost like like Instagram and TikTok and like those sort of things. Like for me, like the reason why I don't post on those platforms a lot is because like there's even more of an expectation for those mm -hmm. because like, and, and I mean like Twitter's text, right? So it's like, you can just like, I like if I think of something stupid, I could fire it off in fucking 20 seconds yeah. versus, you know, having to make a funny TikTok or like, you know, take a nice picture or something like that. So you like you have that and i don't know like i for me like twitter's just always kind of been my like i'm gonna do whatever i want on here and i'm just gonna like i'm gonna make my jokes and like you know uh, people are gonna get mad it's like oh i made fun of system of a down like and i have people sending me fucking death threats and i'm just like cool man like go come come shoot me with a gun and we can listen to the pizza song if i survive like whatever you know what I mean? like that sort of shit and i'm like it's just like, like Twitter to me has always been more like more up my alley. And I think that like, when you are not necessarily in a band or, or whatever, but it's like, if you are a, if you're trying to push like your own brand, like you kind of have to figure out what world you live in and like appeal to those people because you'll get right. like, for example, like I posted that stupid white claw tweet or whatever. And it's like, I posted that in 2018 and these fucking like giant meme pages are like just now posting it on Instagram. And it's like, you know, and then I have people like arguing with me in the comments being like, that's not true, like whatever. And I'm just like, bro, I, I wrote this tweet like fucking four years ago. Like I don't, I was, I was, I was like goofing on James from Varials, like relax. But, uh, but you know, it's like, you just kind of have to figure out like what, what like fucking fishnet you fall into and how you yeah. can reach the most people but yeah i would say like i don't really feel pressured that much i mm. and also i mean given like like you know if you look at like the counterparts twitter or like my twitter or whatever it's like it's very much the opposite of that i feel like like it's like no like you get right. what you get when you get it or kiss my ass kind of thing and it's like and like <laughs> yeah. and it's like obviously i don't mean it like i'm just fucking around but that's that's the world that i end up in and for some reason finally people started to think like this is funny whereas at the start people were just like i hate this guy he's an asshole right he thinks he's taught yeah. like you know he thinks he's like the fucking king and i'm just like bro like go listen to one of our records like there's 10 songs and eight of them are about me blowing my brains out like you think i fuck you think that i think i rock like i don't know about that but but yeah yeah it's, I, yeah I, I don't know it I don't think that this came up on our first um our on our first interview, but it seems like you, like a different generational example as far as how Twitter has affected a band, you know, definitely you with yeah. counterparts is kind of like an example. And then fast forward to maybe a more current thing, like when I had Joseph uh of Tsunami on, he was like, Yeah, like we just started a Twitter and then people were like, Is this band gonna do anything? And then now they're one of the biggest hardcore sure, bands in the world sure. right now. Yeah. So it's pretty like um I like how you said it where it's like figure out what world you want to live in. Yep. And also like you can live in multiple worlds. Of course. Like, you can yeah, have, you know, your your scratch with Twitter and then maybe you do like YouTube. Um, you know, for myself, like I watched a lot of YouTubers uh growing up and they were just being like it's so like liberating to like you know uh if if you were uh f into film it's like you have to go through all this red tape of and ye or yellow tape or whatever color of tape to be able to like get your film yeah. in front of people mm -hmm. and get people to watch it but now with youtube you can just press publish and it just goes up to all those people yeah for um sure. for sure and and mm -hmm. it's like the same kind of process with twitter or facebook or tiktok but there's just like more steps in place in twitter it seems like you write something and you you send it and there's yeah. no creative that necessarily needs to fall behind it. So for sure, um, for sure. Yeah. It, it's, and it's funny. Cause sorry, you go. I, I was just going to say like with, it all depends on like what you are 
like what world you think that you like you're confident that you could thrive in i guess like sure. with instagram okay. yeah, and cool. you know like that sort of shit it's just like okay like instagram's like just pretty fucking pictures and it's like well i'm not a photographer like i make jokes so like let like i'll use my keyboard like i'll you know like my all i need is like the fucking alphabet and like i can get my shit out so like but then you know but then you have bands that they hire like a, a photographer and like who's amazing and it's like they're massive on instagram but then they're not like their tweets don't really do shit and it's you know and like they don't have a lot of followers and stuff so it's like it's just a matter of sort of like figuring out like what like not only what you're good at but like what isn't going to be a burden for you like going back to what you said where it's like do you feel pressured it's like with instagram for counterparts it's like yes i feel pressured to post more shit but like i stopped caring because i'm like well like we've we're canadian and like we have members from different countries we played one show since COVID happened like we don't have content to keep pushing out but the twitter it's like I'll think of something fucking stupid and just post it. And then it's like, you know, and then people see it and it's funny and it becomes a joke. And it's like, that furthers your band too. So it's like, you know, if, if I was a photographer, like, you know, or like something or like whatever, I, I might, I might steer myself into a different lane, but I wouldn't, you know, but as of right now, it's just like, well, like I, I think at this point I know where we're supposed to be. So I'm just like, I'm just going to capitalize on this. Cause it's easy for me. I can do it a lot. I love it. Like I love making my little fucking stupid jokes on the counterparts, Twitter and other people like it too. So it's like, why wouldn't I just do that? If, you know, if I could take pictures of us at practice and fire, like, you know, we had, we hired somebody to do shit for us at shows. It's like, and we had all this content, I would probably do both, but all I've got now is like my dumb fucking brain. So it's like, cool, I'll just use my thumbs and hopefully people will start to like us if I make a joke that's funny enough, you know? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I do think that like, you know, it, it's been cool to see uh, just different experimentations with other things. And I think you're right. It's like certain bands can be strong in some areas then you just know that it's a press or a PR person just like filling the, yeah, like checking a box more so. For sure. Yeah. And, and I, like, I, I, I feel like that's like, obviously that's like a pretty common thing in our world. Like, you know, if we have to announce something, like you gotta be fucking dreaming. If you think that I'm going to be like, okay, like I logged on the Twitter and posted about it. Now I have to do Instagram. Now I have to do Facebook and then I'll make a TikTok about it. And then I'll post it to uh, fucking bands in town or like whatever the fuck it is. It's like, no, like I'm, it's like, I'm not doing any of that. It's like, like I do the Twitter shit and then our managers do the other stuff. But I think it's because like, like I've had, you know, like our managers have told me multiple times where they're just like, yo, like you have to like, here's the shit. Like you post this on Twitter, you make your jokes, you do your thing and we'll handle everything else. And, and I'm like, yeah, hundred percent because that's the other things like aren't my world. Like Twitter's my world. You know what I mean? So, right. Um, and also I think that like, there is definitely something to be said about bands that run their own social media and shit. And it's like, obviously like you can tell that when you go on the counterparts Twitter, like you can tell that like our managers aren't posting it. Like I've had like both right. of them have told me, like even Will was just like, yo, you gotta be careful. Like what you say to people that follow you, like you're gonna, you're gonna get in trouble one day. They're gonna be mad at you. And I'm like, let them be mad. Like I don't give a fucking shit, but you know, but like, you can tell when it's somebody in the band and it's a fucking scheduled post that their manager made. And for me, I'm just like, I'm going to put all my eggs in like one basket and just do the Twitter thing. And everything else can be very like, you know, calculated and, you know, and like, there's no really like real, like feeling to it. Um, but you know, maybe, people, maybe other bands aren't as funny as I am. So that's, you know, like right. that's, that's all it is. So fuck it yeah yeah i think i think it is it is uh it's cool to see um do you have because you know to that point i think it's always like people joke about like the the big brands yeah. like you know the wendy's twitter person yeah. or the whoever like denny's or something yeah for sure right and they'll get into a feud with one another like i think that's like 
I feel like that almost deserves like a documentary of its own of about these people that got hired yeah, for, for X for sure. reason for to sure. run these accounts. Cause like it's, you're playing with huge IP at the end of the day. And like, yeah. you know, <clears throat> one wrong, one wrong joke that doesn't land could just like the stocks of that company uh, just like, plummet to the ground. Yeah. A hundred percent. And like, that's, that's yeah. why I feel confident doing it because I'm just like, if if I like cross a line and I make fun of our fans too much, like, you know, like I, like we built this, you know what I mean? Like we're not a fucking publicly traded company. No one's going to lose their fucking, sure. their mortgage because they have all their fucking, they, you know, they have their retirement fund invested into like the counterpart stock. So like, I like, I, I like doing it, but that's like, that shit's crazy to where, right. you know, like, like you, like I, I can't remember what brand it was, but I remember somebody posted like some joke, and then I'm pretty sure like the person got fired shortly after. Oh, really? And, and it was just like, it's like okay, that might be too risky, but for me, I'm like I'm dealing with this fucking band that I play in, you know, and it's like we play fucking like metalcore shit. So it's like at the end of the day, like what's what's gonna happen? Somebody's gonna be like, yeah. I won't buy your records anymore. And it's like, you weren't gonna buy it anyway. Fuck off. You know, <laughs> you know what I mean? But you know, if Yeah, like, I don't know if it's just like high risk, high reward. Cause like if if Denny's or uh Wendy's or any company like that just had like your typical like the new blah blah blah. Yeah. Now won't we'll, like like no one's gonna follow that but people no, no, are like, gonna follow those brands if they're beefing with taco bell for sure about, for sure like, for sure baja blast yeah. or whatever you know like it it gets people talking but totally. like but like, like the wendy's twitter the, like the, the, ro pressure, the roast day you know? shit i'm just like even even that stuff i'm just like like i i can't remember i can't remember what it was but it was like i'm pretty sure like it was like under oath or something like tweeted at at wendy's and were like roast us and the guy was like your new song sounds like a fucking like elementary school kid who just learned swear words or something and i'm, <laughs> and, I'm and i'm like i'm like dude that is so fucking funny and i'm like but even that i'm like i don't even know if i could go that hard on somebody i'm like i have no problem being like i hate you all you're terrible all i want is your money you're the fucking worst because i know it's a joke but like i'm like i don't know right. i don't know about the personal attacks and shit but, but well you right. know at the end of the day it's that person hiding behind the wendy's girl icon exactly so exactly, it's yeah. not like rick who lives For in sure. montana yeah. you know Ex exactly exactly <laughs> yeah, yeah but so it's like a little bit of a past there but yeah, yeah that shit is wild dude yeah it's yeah the whole like and i mean even like i said before it's like when i first started doing this shit and like i first like took this angle i guess even us like we had so much backlash like people were um you know, people were straight up being like, oh, oh, like, I'll never listen to you guys again. Like, you guys are all fucking assholes. You don't take anything seriously. And then so from my, like, my mindset was just like, okay, we lost him. So maybe, maybe I could, I could like rinse them and like roast them enough to where like the people that still like us will be like, this guy fucking rocks. This guy's funny. You right. know? So, so like that, that was my whole thing. And it's like, it took like years and even now, like you, like you see it now with the counterparts Twitter, where I'll straight up be like, "Yo, you guys are, you guys are the fucking worst," and like all the all the replies are just like, "Love you too," and I'm like, "Let's go," you know what I mean? It's like, okay, fuck, yeah, like they get Glad it. Glad that we understand the communication between right. One it's another. like, yo, I'm making jokes. I'm fucking around. Obviously, I love you guys, but like, I just want to make fun of like shit or like just goof on you a little bit and. And people get it now. Whereas like at first people were like taking personal offense to it. And like, it was, it was really weird, but you know, now I think like, you know, not to, not to have like a big head or like an ego about it by any means, but like the counterparts, Twitter shit, like there's been so many bands that post stuff. Like I wish we could post the same shit that counterparts does and everything. And I'm, and I'm just like, yo, you can, I'm like, you can do it. People are going to get mad, but like, you can do it. It's fine. Right. And it takes and time. It, it it does it does and luckily i i mean i started it before we were the size that we are now so it was like oh shit like 25 people are gonna come see us instead of 30 like how will i ever manage this you know what i mean so like it didn't really matter yeah but but if that same drop off of five people is you know 500 to 495 it's immeasurable but 30 then, yeah, to 25 then, is noticeable for sure yeah 
Yeah, if we're talking hundreds, like then I'll probably start kissing some ass for sure. But <laughs> yeah. yeah, I love and, you guys. Please come to the show. <laughs> yep. Oh, this is the best. This has been the best show of the tour. Like, I, I would rather just be like, yo, this shit kind of fucking sucks. You guys want to like move around a little bit? Like, what's going on with you guys like <laughs> sleepy or something? And then like, you know, most people understand that I'm just kidding. But, you know, but it's 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 so weird. Like, and I mean, like, obviously, as it goes on and things change and it's like, you know, like, I don't fucking know, like three years ago, it's like, I didn't have TikTok, and it's like new things get introduced, other things phase out. Like, I remember before being like, yeah, you gotta, you gotta update the Facebook profile. And I'm like, dude, fucking delete it. Like, we don't need that shit. Like, <laughs> who cares? Like, Just give the gray icon for kind of straight up where, where it's like, oh, how many likes do you have on Facebook? I'm like, I don't fucking care about any of this. Like, none of this matters. But right. as time goes on and things progress, it's like you, you know, you just have to have the ability to adapt. And if you don't, mm -hmm. it's like, you know, like if your band's really big, like you'll probably be fine, but we're not. So I'm just like, yeah, cool. Like I want to fuck around with this stuff, you know? Right. Um, so we're going to take a topic change here, Brendan, sure. you know, wanted to connect with you in Hamilton, but you know, unfortunately, you know, we couldn't I apologize do that. For that. <clears throat> Tell me about the haunted waterfalls of Hamilton. Um, so I don't like, I've been to this waterfall like multiple times in my life. Um, mm -hmm. I've never seen anything spooky. Uh, I'm, I've been to the fucking, the old like insane asylum and shit. Never seen anything weird, but, um, do you remember that show? Creepy Canada. Creepy <clears throat> Canada. Yeah. I'm pretty sure it was on like, is this another YTV? I know we talked a lot about YTV on yeah, our last podcast, not, but I don't think we brought up Creepy Candy. No, no, like it, it was it wasn't YTV. It was like um, I want to say like it was like a Canadian like outdoor channel. Like it might have been like okay. OLN or something like that. But um, <laughs> okay, so like it was an entire show based on um, like just like haunted places in Canada, and one of them was Hamilton. So I remember like I used to watch it all the time. And they started talking about Albion Falls and I was just like, holy shit, like that's, you know, that's like around the corner. Like I, I know Albion Falls. So the story is that there was like, um, like this waterfall in Hamilton. It, um, I don't, I don't like remember the entire backstory, but like, basically like it's haunted by a ghost. There was somebody like, I think there was like some sort of affair back in like, I don't fucking know the like whenever the, you know, sometime before MySpace, so uh, we'll say that. And, uh, <laughs> and, and people were like, I was like, this dude started like cheating on his wife or something. And then, uh, it, like the girl he was cheating on him with, like, uh, like fell in love with them. And then his wife found out and he was like, I'll never talk to you again. Like I'm going to be with my wife. And apparently she like threw herself from the top of the falls and then her ghost like haunts Albion falls now. So in like, okay. in like pictures, or if you go at a certain time, like you'll see a woman like on the top of the falls, like looking over and shit like that. And I've, I've never seen it. I've been, like I said, I've been there multiple times, but we have, I mean, Hamilton, like Hamilton's got some, like, we have some spookies for sure, but, okay. but you know, uh, but yeah, that was, that was one. There's also, I, like, I'm pretty sure they did an episode on like in Ancaster, uh, like the Ancaster old mill is like apparently haunted it's like this restaurant wedding venue event type place um mm. apparently that like that place is crazy fucking haunted but like there was another one where there was this like um this old like insane asylum that like like you can i mean the, like the last time that i went there security showed up in like fucking seconds it was like Timing oh, was, wow. was, was incredible. Like we, we were like walking up to the, like a place to like go inside of it. And the guy just rolled up and was just like, you guys looking for no, ghosts? No, 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 no. And we're like, <laughs> I'm like, not really like whatever. Um, and, but yeah, like there's, ugh, fuck, there's, there's so many, there's so many. Yeah. Jo but, Jordan sent me a message that, um, apparently that, that quote unquote, uh, lady from the falls happened in 1915 so a, a little before myspace was was in the uh, just like a like a, a tiny just, bit. It, like, I mean, just a little <laughs> like way before myspace but a little bit before austin powers would have been alive so it's fine <laughs> it makes sense very true um yeah uh when it comes 
Are are you into spooky stuff yourself? Uh, like, not really. But I'll like. I think it's because I'm, like, if spooky shit were to happen to me, like, I would probably be scared. Like, I'd be like, oh fuck, okay. <laughs> oh, like, this sucks. I'm out, I'm out of here. Like, I would be the guy that like leaves because I'm like, yeah, I'm not trying to. You're get... the nope, 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 nope yep. kind of person. Yep. When yeah. Yeah, 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 exactly. Um, so like, uh, uh, Kenny, the guy you mentioned on the last episode with Will um he like he loves that shit and like anytime i've done any like spooky ish type shit like it's usually been with him um mm. and i'm just like you know and like him and like even kyle like our drummer like they love it and i'm just like ah i'm like i'm like no i don't like believe in it but like i don't want to be proven wrong you know what i mean it's like <laughs> i'm like oh ghosts and fucking you know all that shit it's just like yeah it's like it's it's bullshit. Like it doesn't exist. But the day that I'm proven wrong, I'm gonna be like, oh crap! Like now they're after me. You know? So right. So I try. I try to just try to just, just stay out of it the best that I can. Yeah. yeah. But when they, when they start coming for everyone who's like, hey, I didn't I didn't shit talk you. Like right? talk to talk to these people. Yeah. First. Yeah. When when the ghosts start coming, haunt these people yeah, first, and they're like, okay, like whose idea was it for the Ouija board? I'm like, oh, it's everybody but me. I didn't want to do. I didn't want to. I didn't want to. <laughs> not not you. Brendan. Yeah. I'm like, oh, I I knew you had do not disturb on, and you weren't gonna answer. Like I, I knew you were busy. I'm trying to stay out of this shit. I don't right. want anything to do with this. But <laughs> right. Um, you brought up Kenny. Do you want yeah. to say anything about your thoughts about? you know this is part two of of that yeah. little question yeah for, i mean i can well. i can get into this um i sure. mean so when so we record with will and he started recording out of his house and he kind of lives like in the middle of nowhere now but he is able to record out of his house and also have like you know he could like he can live there and also have a studio there so him and his wife marissa told us about this bubble tea place and so we went a couple times and it's like, it's pretty, like, it's really up our alley. I mean, it's bubble tea. They have like, yeah, it's like, well, like there's like fucking Rolakama shit. And like, there's Totoro. Is this in Belleville, New Jersey? No, no. So like, this isn't like, I'm pretty sure the bubble tea place is in Denville, New Jersey, which is like, oh, like okay. it's like this weird, like single strip in the middle of nowhere that like everybody there looks like they have like way more money than you. So you're like, okay. <laughs> it's, it's like one of those um so having kenny around and shit like we i mean like you know we like we like bubble tea and we like cute shit so like we would we would kind of go we would go to this place every now and then after we found it and then so kenny was with us uh while we were recording the new record he was with us for like two like two or three weeks or something and obviously like he's not in the band but he you know he's not like so he's not doing anything so he was just kind of hanging out at will's house and i started noticing like every single day he would ask me to if i wanted to go get bubble tea and i was like well i mean i like it but i don't want it every fucking day you know what i mean i'm like, <laughs> like i'm good on that and then you know we're so and like and then he would just go like so he had his car with him and he would just leave and come back or whatever and then i guess we found out that there was like a girl that worked at the bubble tea place that he thought was cute. And it's like, okay, like that's, you know, like that, that's pretty nice. Like that's adorable. We'll take it. But then, so everybody else, but me and like, so Kenny and I were on the same page about the whole thing. Everybody else was just like, you need to talk to her. Like you should ask her <laughs> out all this shit. And I'm just like, yo, are you fucking, I'm like, are you insane? Like, I'm like, Kenny's not from this country and she doesn't know anything about him. Like, this is fucking weird. And then, um, and like everybody else is just like, dude, like what's the worst that could happen? And I'm like, well, I mean, we all like bubble tea. And if he asks her out and she's like, she says no, or she's like, ew, fuck off or something. It's like, we can never go back. So it's like, okay, like, do you, do you want to sacrifice this bubble tea place for like maybe a shot with like mm, to go on yeah. a date, to go on a date with this girl? Um, you know, not like, not that I think that she would, but still it's like that's a risk you know what i mean like if somebody if like if a girl worked at like the fucking the egg factory that i thought was cute sure it's like oh fuck i can never go to the egg factory again like fantastic I'll, sure. I, I would never go there in my entire life or like mustard yeah. or like you know the egg mustard and olive factory i'd be like yeah take my chances who cares but bubble tea sure. it was like this is something that we were getting often so 
I like, and Kenny felt the same way. He's just like, no, like I'll, I'm never going to do that. Like, what if it goes wrong? And I'm like, yeah, that's like, that's, that's my shit too. Like I, I feel the same way. So, so we like, we, you know, we joked around about it for a little while and then, but at the same time, uh, like the last, I think like 10 times, which I know is fucking crazy. Like it's a lot. Um, I think that, that a lot of bubbles. Yeah. That Kenny went, she wasn't working. So I think maybe she quit or she got fired. I'm not really sure, but mm, either way, I mean, it's long gone, you know, it's for, yeah. for forbidden love, Romeo and Juliet. I mean, maybe it'll happen one day, may, you know? Right. Yeah. It, it, it's, it's like a, a classic Craigslist, like misconnection. Yeah. It's like, I got bubble tea from you every day yeah. for months on end. And then <sighs> I finally struck up the courage, but, um, yeah, it, like that's way more context. Of to course, that. of course. I know we were talking in the sure. DM. You're like, I could say maybe a couple. I thought you were just gonna be like, I think he should. I'm like, okay, we'll move on to the next thing. But it's like now the whole. I do not. I do not think he should under any circumstance because he's gonna like. There's too much at stake for sure. Um, yeah. <laughs> but if anything, now you have an entire podcast audience on the edge of their seat. Like Exa- you know, exactly. Now they come up with their own fan yeah. theories and everything. They're writing their fan fiction shit about it. You know, they're they're shipping fucking Kenny and Bubble Tea Girl. But right. um but with uh like maybe, maybe I should uh because uh Spotify has a feature now where you can do a poll. So maybe I should ask the audience if they think Kenny should ask Bubble you could. Tea Girl. Yeah, or not. yeah, yeah, you probably could. And then we'll just send them the results and be like, look. Yeah like hundreds of people have said either yes or no sure. like and like i like i would be down with that 100 percent. but there is a strong chance that he'll never like she hasn't been there <laughs> the last 10 times he's went so it's like she might not work there anymore but right you never like you know one day like they might get married and like i can't imagine who else would be kenny's best man aside from like a pack of belmont cigarettes so if, <laughs> if i have to give the speech like it'll be a cute story to tell you know what i mean but um, right but what you know, whatever. It's it's fine. Like I I I love it. I mean, there's nothing wrong with Kenny. He's fuck. He's he's my best friend in the world. I love him to death. Like, you know, under any other circumstance, I think he should do it. But if it means he just like can't get bubble tea when we're at Will's house anymore, it's like, do you really want to? You really want to risk that? Like. <laughs> I don't know. Right. And this, and this is just a classic thing that otherwise would just be like something that just happens and you make a joke out of it in the, yeah. in the little uh, moment. And then it is off into the For wind. Sure. But the fact that it's just become this big <clears throat> whole thing, that's enough to talk about on a podcast yeah. is just, yeah, it's I, just hilarious. To yeah. Me, so. I, I love it. And like, like as soon as you asked me like something that we could like fuck with Will about, I was just like, this is, like, <laughs> this gotta be the funniest thing. You know what I mean? Like we have to do this. Like, but, but yeah, no, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm on, I'm on team Kenny. I, th- I think that, I think it would be a little bit weird for sure, but mm-hmm. yeah. I, mean, ho- I yeah. hope, it, it, I hope they get married. I hope they have, you know, uh, the best, all the little bubble together. tea babies. Yeah. Little, bo- <laughs> little Boba's running around in their diapers. <laughs> little like, Boba's right- <laughs> yeah. It's like, come on. Like, Not I, Boba Fett's like Boba's little bubbles yes. in your bubble tea. I would, I would love that so much, but like, you know, like I said, I mean, I don't really think there's like that much shit that I like or like places that I go every, well, actually, I mean, okay. So like near the studio, there's like a bagel place it, like that we go to all the time and they have like one of the best bagel sandwiches I've ever had. I don't care how, how in love I would be with one of the cashiers there. Like I'm not risking that. <laughs> I'm not fucking right. doing it. You're like, you're, you're, you're at just your like, mind. you know, kind of slap yourself if you're looking and you're like, all right. Yeah. I'm right. <laughs> yeah. It's like, okay. Like I can either never taste this sandwich ever again, as long as I live, or maybe I'll go on a date with this person. I'm like, give me the, <laughs> give me the bagel every fucking time. So that's, that's my stance on it. But <laughs> there's just like all these like par- alternate realities where it's like, you only like me for the bagels. It's like, that's not true, honey. <laughs> uh, but, but all, I mean, tea. it's not, not true. You know what I mean? It's like it's not nice. Yeah, it's like eh, maybe you knock that price down from fourteen ninety nine to fucking eight. You know what I mean? Like, eh, okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> maybe there's a little bit of selfishness happening there. But um, speaking of discounts, what are your thoughts on Costco? Love it. I go there all the fucking time. Love it all the time. I was told the opposite. What? I go to Costco. I was told that you hate Costco. Oh, 
Um, I hate being in Costco. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. So every like every single time, like, uh, like you love Costco, but you hate the Costco experience. Yes. So ag- okay. like, again, like, thanks for clarifying. Like, go, I was like, going, did, I, did someone miss info- no, information? No, 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 definitely not. Um, so going to like going back to like the the Facebook shit, like the type of people that like still use Facebook and stuff, and you know, like the hey help me water my fucking crops in farmville when you get them into a when you get them into a costco like i would like to commit assault bad <laughs> they're the fucking worst dude like like dude i mean that Co- costco is like it's so good like adrian and i go there at least once a week we fucking you know like every you know everything it's like that's become like the new like grocery store for us because you can kind of find everything that you would ever need there plus dollar 50 hot dog and fucking drink combo like there's just there's so much shit i love it but like going to the ancaster costco and having to be around all these fucking it's like it's like you went up to a group of like 60 plus year olds and said like have you ever been in a store before like you know what a store is and they're like i have no clue what that could possibly be and right. and also i walk really slow and you're like yeah come with me i got the perfect building for you to go in and then they just like it's it's a fucking mess like every time i'm in there i'm just like whew, like i and uh, like i i so i i think i i tweeted about it and i i'm i think i'm known for like road rage for sure but um my costco rage is 10 times worse <laughs> because i'm not in a car there's nothing to stop me from hitting them and i'm like i can just do right. it maybe i can get away with it but it's just mm-hmm. they're the fucking worst they're they're ter- like they all they're like it's it's like you went back into like the 1800s and picked somebody up and were just like come with me and then you put them into a costco and they were just like like looking around dumbfounded and i'm just like bro yeah. like you're looking at it's a it's like yeah like instead of a it being a fucking 12 pack of coke it's a 24 like why are, how how is this how is this so why is that enough to stop you dead in your yeah, tracks like, and like how do look you at not it comprehend this of all things right it's like it's mostly food right it's just good deals like right. you would think somebody would be like that's a good goddamn deal and pick it up and put it in their cart but they're like doing like mental math and like you can see the fucking <laughs> equations floating around their head yeah just going over their faces <laughs> Then they get to the counter and they're like, and the, the cashier is just like, Hey, can I see your Costco card? And they're like, wait, I have to find it. And I'm like, you needed it to get in. Where did, like, what did you, what could you possibly, did you swallow it? Did you just bury it? Right. Like Like, after showing it, just, let me just shove this all the way down. Yeah. You forgot you got in the door and you were just like, Hey, like I'm allowed to be in this exclusive club. And the person was like, rock on. And then you just went and fucking threw it behind you it's like what's wrong with you just get in and get it out like but yeah but the hot dog combo fucking fantastic um i do love it there but like what i would give you know if i was like a rich man and it was like oh you know like what do i want to do for my birthday i would just like rent out a costco and just go fuck <laughs> out in a costco with me and only my friends and it's like Holy shit, it only takes me 10 minutes to go get the the two pack of bagels for $6 instead of having to weave right. in and out of people who shouldn't have like should have lost their license 20 years ago. It's fucking Have you insane. seen that movie um Employee of the Month? Yes. Uh, with Dane yep. Cook? Yep. That that whole scene where it's closed down and he has the date in the, you yep. know, like the wasn't it's it, essentially wasn't it, Costco. It was Jessica Simpson, was it not? I think so. Or like I, um, I can't remember who the hell is, like I can't remember who it was, but I saw that movie when I was working at Sobey's grocery store and I was like, I know, oh, I'm like, I, you're like, I'm like, I wish I was at the cost. <clears throat> right. I'm, I'm like, this Hey, shit place. I know some of these words like this. I, I yeah. loss prevention. I've heard of that. I know what this fucking, yeah. I know what this shit means, but, um, yeah, yeah it's, there are very <laughs> few places, uh, you know, when sometimes it's like, oh, uh, seniors 65 plus from 7am to 8am, you know, it's only, they're the only people I'm like, yeah. I kind of wish that there was like sectored off times that Costco was available for people under the yep. age of 30, yep. you know, like, <laughs> like, dude, it's like, it's so fun. It's, it's rough. And like, um, I will say, so like every now and then, like we'll kind of, if anybody's listening and like is familiar with 
you know, like the Southern Ontario, like Costco shit. Like mm. if I, like, if we go to Ancaster, it's like, it's a fucking wreck every single time. Sometimes you can go to the Burlington one and it's kind of nice. You get in and out kind of quick, but Ancaster, like, it's like the oldest one, I think in the area. And it's just like, mm. the people are the oldest fucking people in the area. So it's like, dude, this is, this is the worst thing on earth. It's just my, um, it's funny, like bringing up like the ADD thing again, like, uh, when I was getting diagnosed, the person that I was like doing the questionnaire with, she was like, Oh, like, how mad do you get when you're like, walking behind somebody slow, or like, you're in a really long line? I'm like, I can't think of anything else that makes me more mad. And, <laughs> and so going to a Costco voluntarily is like fucking insane. But the deals, you know, it's like, it's, it's just, <laughs> it's the deals. Also, I, ha mm -hmm. I have mad respect for like, there was that like article going around a little while ago where it was like, um, the guy who, who like opened Costco, um, I guess it went to somebody else and it was like a different CEO and the CEO went up to him and was like, Hey, we got to stop doing this like dollar 50 pop with the hot dog combo. And the guy who started Costco looked at him and was just like, if you change the price of that, I'll fucking kill you. And I'm like. I, are you serious oh yeah. well, i mean <laughs> oh that's like that that's what i've seen so it's like i want to believe that so bad because i'm just like yeah, i'm like me too <laughs> i'm like i don't care how slow that like there like, are literally walks, business I will, people i will, will <laughs> but there's literally mm -hmm. like people who have probably well you know, let's not give them that much credit but like that combo is literally to kill over like <laughs> it's like so ridiculous and and like I, I agree. I, like, I agree. You know what I, I mean? Yeah. Mad respect. Dude, if you know, they... Sticking to your guns. Like, if they changed it and they were like, yo, the hot dog pop combo is like $2 now, I, I would actually mm -hmm. feel betrayed. I would I would be like, this, oh, is, this is a slight okay. against me personally, and I'm pissed <laughs> off about it, but... <laughs> But yeah, this I'm, reminds me very much of how Arizona has like stayed 99 cents and so many outside forces have been yeah. like, you can do it 120. And people are like, no, yeah. it's always 99 cents. It, I felt exactly. like I lost exactly. mad respect <laughs> for Little Caesars when it was like, you get the $5 yeah. pizza. And it's like, it's five ninety nine now. It's like, you're dead to yeah. me, motherfucker. Straight, straight up, yeah. Yeah, and it's like, yeah. it's, that, it's that weird like, you know, it, like it's not even like the product isn't worth it, but it's just like, man, fuck you. Like we had a good thing going. Yeah, we had a good exactly. thing going. We had a deal. We had a deal. <laughs> we had we had a deal. Yeah. It, it's like when when where's like, Howie Mandel when you need him? Straight up. It's like like yeah. when when you like like when you go to like some convenience stores and shit, and it'll be like Arizona ninety nine cents, and then you then over top of the ninety nine cents, you see the little sticker, and it's like oh, it's actually like one forty nine. I'm like. You deserve to lose your business license. I'm like, I'm like, fuck off, man. Like we, we worked something out. We've been doing this for years. You can't just switch up on me like that. Like that's, that's, that should be illegal, but you yeah. know, but, uh, yes, yes. I ride for Costco, but I hate being inside Costco for sure. <laughs> that's fair. Yep. Yeah. I'm glad that we clarified that. Cause yes. I was like, oh shit, yep. I got false information, but you know, it, yep. you know, we had to go a little deeper to get to that. Of course. Um, Brendan, one of the last things that we can do before we start to wrap up, um, I heard that you're really good at two truths and a lie. And I was curious if we could play that before we wrap up the show. We could we could play that. Okay. I don't I don't know if I'm that good at it. I was told that you are fantastic. So and I and I if I know myself, I I can be duped pretty easily. They might, I'm gonna do my best. They might have all been lies. <laughs> and i just didn't clarify which which is also a good game you know three lies yeah. that's a better game for sure <laughs> yeah tell me three lies and then we'll just move on um two truths and a lie oh fuck man shit I'm trying to think um i love playing in counterparts i love playing in end I can't think of a third one. I'm trying to think of a third lie. Oh shit, I gave it away. <laughs> <laughs> and also, and I um and I think vaping's stupid. I think it's so dumb. <laughs> mm, I have to really really think hard about yeah, this. Shit. Yeah, yeah, this is a tough one. Um yeah. no, fuck, I'm trying to think of like 
like, do you have some for me? Like, you gotta give me time to think. But... Oh, do you want me to do it for yeah, you? Yeah, yeah, of course. Let me let me guess. We'll actually oh, we'll damn. actually do two. Okay, now we'll do the two tables have turned. We'll do two and one. What do you mean two and like one? Like two, like two truths, one lie. Okay. Um. Hmm. Interesting. This has never happened here on the podcast, so I'm I'm wanting to make this as good as possible. <clears throat> um. One of my dogs is named after a sea creature. Okay. Uh, my favorite Halo game is Halo 2. And Hmm, what's the last one that I should toss up here? I started drinking my coffee black at the age of 18. Fuck. Those are all those are all like crazy specific. Like I feel like they're all truths. I'm going to go with <clears throat> um I think the last two are true and the first one's a lie, maybe. <clears throat> So you think my dog named after a sea creature is That's not that's not true. <clears throat> that is true actually. Shit. <clears throat> what do you like Halo 1? Did... Like you like Halo Wars maybe? <laughs> like I, I don't know what it could be. <laughs> I said Halo 2, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, Halo 2 is my favorite. Okay. My dog's name is Minnow. Ah, uh, okay. And I started drinking coffee black at uh when me and my wife got married so i was 23 you remember that yeah <laughs> that's so it, i was it was very strange i just woke up that day i'm like today's the day so shit you were close so yeah i i, I gotta apply i was, I was all right okay yeah Fuck. <laughs> i mean i mean i'm glad i'm glad that you're you know if you're not drinking it black it's probably not a good coffee so yeah <laughs> that's that's facts <laughs> uh well brendan you know, this has been a great time, a uh, great kind of follow up interview. I always like For chatting sure. with you. Um, and I and I hope that, you know, you have fun as much as I do, uh, you know, shooting the shit. Um, course, the last absolutely. portion of the podcast, as you know, is a favorite mosh story that you would like to share. I know that you've already shared one uh, yeah. on the podcast, so you can't yeah. retell that <laughs> one per se. So anything yeah. that first comes to your mind is how we start to wrap up the show. Shit, I'm trying to think. Do you need a reminder of which one you told? The last one was probably the me putting the kid to the table, right? <clears throat> yeah, the yeah. blind one. Yeah, the blind one. Blind one is like, oh, yeah. it's okay. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's fine. I thought it was funny. Yeah, that like that's yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's that's probably my okay. Um, so like not like it like it's not. I wouldn't say it's like crazy necessarily, but the last time I moshed was we did counterparts did the um of malice 10 year tour so we were doing mm -hmm. common like this is like 2014 we were doing common vision <clears throat> and that ended in california and then we had to drive like three days straight to get to or it might have been two days uh to get to minneapolis because that's where the first okay. like it was like uh i can't remember the venue but that was where the first day of the um of the misery signals tour started and so we like obviously like it's you know it's like it's the of malice tenure um so there's a lot of people like older than me there um and i remember i thought it was so weird because like as misery signals was setting up um i saw a bunch of people in like suits that just got off work running into the venue and like okay. they were running in like in like full suits like they were going to a fucking wedding or something and so i was i was like i was like god damn dude i'm like these i'm like i thought i was like the old guy like this is fucking crazy so mm. um so there's like a group of these like fucking suits like it looks like you're on fucking wall street or whatever like and they're just like chilling like waiting for misery signals to start playing and i remember <clears throat> i was standing in the crowd and I was like, okay, like I'm gonna get it out of my system tonight. So, because there was like probably like I think it was like five shows or something. So I'm like, okay, 
at that time, I'm like, I don't know anybody in Minnesota. And I don't think anybody could like pick me out of a lineup and be like, it was him. It was the fucking counterparts guy. So, um, so I'm standing there and then I start talking to this guy and he's just like, he's like, yo, like I love counterparts. He's like, I know you love misery, like misery signals. Like this has to be so fucking sick. It's gotta be so cool for you. And I'm like, dude, we were supposed to go home. And like, we drove days in the opposite direction to, to do this thing. Like this is so fucking sick. I love this. And then he, I can't remember what he was saying, but then he started telling a story and then right in the middle of it, I heard a victim of target start and it was just like, dun, 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 dun. and I was like, excuse me for one moment. And I ran and I don't know if this is like a subconscious thing, like, like a hatred for people who are more successful than I am, but I just ran and like front flipped into the group of the people wearing suits. And, and then, <laughs> and then I came up to him after and, and like, and I went fucking nuts for the whole set, <clears throat> but then I came up to him after and I was just like, Hey, that was really rude. I'm so sorry about that. Like, I, I didn't mean to cut it off. I just had to get that out of my system. And he's like, no, dude, I get it. Like that was so fucking funny. And then afterwards, like I talked to some of them and they were just like, you know, I'm, I'm like, Hey, I'm really sorry about that. I like, it is what it is. Like we're at a show mm -hmm. and they were just like, nah, man, like reminds me of the good old days. Like totally funny. Like I spilled my beer and I'm like, okay, I'll buy you another fucking beer. Like that's me being a, that's me being a dickhead. Like I'll just buy you a beer. Um, and that was it. I think like, but it was like, you know, it was cute. I think like, it was like kind of, kind of sweet. And then like, like I said, I, yeah. I got it out of, like, I got it out of my system the first night and then, but yeah, like every now and then I'll think about that. And I'm just like, dude, this person was like mid sentence and I ran away and did a flip. I'm like that's so fucking. Rude. Hang on for one <laughs> second. I'm like that's that is just like go full. That anime. is so fucking rude. Um, but you know, at the end of the day, we were all good, and it's like it's it's adorable to think that there was like everybody in the room like understood the like how much like we all like it meant a lot to everybody to where it was just like you know if I got you know if somebody like fucking put their foot in my fucking mouth, I'd be like, eh, fair enough. It's of malice tenure. Like, what am I supposed to do with that? Yeah. But, <laughs> so it, it was nice, but, but yeah, I don't know. I mean, mosh stories is not really, there's not many other ones that I have. I'll have to, yeah. I like, I completely forgot about that. So like, you know, if, when we do part three, I'll have to, I'll have to have one queued up that I can, that I can mention yeah. that might be funnier, but also, I mean, you get like, we're Canadian, like people here, Mosh like fucking cowards, so it's like whatever. Not 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 much is going on, but right, yeah, yeah. No, I uh, I appreciate you coming back, Brendan, for part two, and the like. If if we can have this be like a yearly routine yeah, for us and do a part three, 100%. like that, that sounds really fun to me. Yeah, um, you know, like always, all your info will be in the show notes and the YouTube descriptions and all that mumbo jumbo. But if there's anything you want to, you know. Uh, shout out, plug, you know, send people off with, you know, talk about anything coming up via end or comeback or comeback kid counterparts. Uh, the floor is yours. Don't tell time. people I joined comeback kid. You can't, that's a secret. <laughs> uh, no, I'll um, get a very like, yeah. <laughs> um, so Andrew hitting me in my DMS. What yeah. did you say? <laughs> um, so a lot of people have been bugging me on Twitter and shit asking like, what's going on with counterparts? Like, when are we getting new shit? It'll be soon for sure. Um, so, I mean, the album's done. It'll literally the only thing that we're waiting on is like, like you can't fucking get vinyl made now. Like, it's like, if you have a, like, if we had, if I had the record done today, like mass fully mastered, ready to go album artwork, all this bullshit, like you're looking at end of the year for sure. So it's like, yeah, at it's, best. it's all up in the air and the, and yes, we could definitely put it out before then, but I don't want to be the band that's like, oh, the album comes out this day and like, oh, did you pre-order the vinyl? Like, well, you're going to get that three months later. It's like, that shit sucks. Right. Like it's fucking whack. I know there's a lot of people that are like, oh, it doesn't matter to me. Like I'll get it eventually, but it's like, you're going to care. Like you're going to be upset mm -hmm. about it. So, so the album's done. It's, you know, we have the full length. Like it's obviously it's the best thing that we've ever fucking done. Jesse and Alex are back. It's fucking sick. Um, I can't wait to put some shit out. Um, for end, um, 
I don't even know, like, Will might get mad at me, but I mean, whatever. Uh, like we like so we have a couple songs that we're putting out soon um and then cool. obviously we have the um we have the headliner in march uh full us tour and you know we've confirmed a bunch of stuff and like you know we'll be going to fuck it. like we're going to europe for the first time we're doing some other shit so this year is gonna be the death of me i actually <laughs> I, I leave like it's the it's the fifth today like i leave in six days and i'm gone until the end of april because we're like I'm wow. like between counterparts and end, like I'm fucked. So it's like I'm just gonna yeah. I'm gonna be a US citizen for three months. So <laughs> so we have we have a really busy year. Both bands have a like, you know, shit's busy, shit's popping. So Yeah. I hope you like but, it. You know, argu- arguably like, you know, if anything, it's good to be back, you know, because sure. you know, sure. after so much time of of not being able to do things and you know that's true. Doing my podcast twice um but you know i i know that um i it i know it'll be exciting to see you back at, back in action for both bands for sure you know i know the the end uh headliner is with our our calgary friends yeah, yeah. uh in wake yeah. so that's very very exciting band as well rocks. um yeah, fucking yeah. sick yeah the, i i had never heard the- i never heard of them until will sent me the lineup and then i looked them up and i was like like I saw that they were from Calgary and I was like, what the, what the fuck's going on? And I listened to it and I was like, let's go. Like, this is, yeah. 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 Shit is sick. Insanely great band. Uh, great, great people. Yeah. I've, I've had the pleasure of doing a, a bits and pieces of different things for their, sure. for their upcoming record. But all that aside, Brendan, thank you again for coming on. I wish mm-hmm. nothing but the best for you in the next crazy couple months to be. Of course. And uh, yeah, excited for part three when we do that oh, yeah. in probably 2023 or yeah, something. Yeah, fuck it. Yeah, when, when, whenever we're both home, I'm down. But thank you so much. I'm Thank you for having me. I had a great time. <laughs>